Hi, Jim Romer, a lot to talk about today, and this video is at least about eight minutes in length, so stay with me, watch this over the weekend. You could download a recent free issue of Weather Wealth and making it available to all bar charts viewers around the world uh, this weekend, and how we called the bear market in grains two months ago, also a two-week free trial period, learn how to trade everything from natural gas to coffee, cocoa, sugar, grains, you name it, what our long-range forecasts are. So we are in a major bear market, obviously, in many agricultural commodities, partly because recently, until now, the stronger dollar, great crops around the world as well. But is that a reason to reverse your position and be long grains? Not necessarily, but perhaps in coffee and sugar. So tongue-in-cheek, I just like to joke around sometimes, we were calling people clowns two months ago, predicting a drought this summer in the Midwest, and La Nina to form. We never actually said this because the trade winds, as you see in the bottom of the screen there, have been blowing east to west. And that tends to uh, keep the ocean temperatures warm, particularly around Australia. And as a result, La Nina has not formed, but could be in the next couple months. So back in early July, I did a bar chart free sample as to why I thought the grain market would be in a bear market all summer. Indeed, we broke 10% since then in corn and also soybeans. Why? My teleconnection program that does not look at the European model or GFS. That stuff is for free, folks. You get what you pay for, right? I saw this back in April and May, the main ridge being west of the Corn Belt based on all these teleconnections, record warm ocean temperatures, sea ice, and El Nino neutral situation. As a result, most of the Corn Belt had decent weather this summer and record yields. As a matter of fact, really, actually back in late June and early July, my bean spider, this looks at the commitment of traders, moisture values, the technical aspect of the market, <clears throat> we add these values all together, was very bearish most of the summer, catching this dollar to dollar fifty move down. I actually mentioned back in June and early July, I thought beans would go to nine fifty. It did exactly that. So we use weather spiders like you see here in many markets to give ideas in options or futures. Generally, when you're in a neutral score, when all these categories kind of are confusing, you do nothing. Otherwise, in slightly bullish, slightly bearish camps, you do options. In uh, in futures, when the, uh, the market, for example, or the spider is like a minus nine, very, very bearish, then you actually do futures trading. Right now, the spider is not quite as bearish because we already had a big break in the market and there's a heavy short position. We are seeing global angular momentum. Think of a skater who has her, his or her hands close together. You spin more quickly, right? When your arms are further apart, you spin much more slowly. This has to do with a slower spin torque along the equator and actually can help form La Nina. As you see, the global angular momentum has gone negative here over the last few weeks. And that's one of the reasons why you've seen some heat in the Southwest Corn Belt and Delta over uh, this last few days. It will continue into next week, but I don't think it's enough to really jeopardize much of the soybean crop. Perhaps we won't reach 54, 54 and a half bushels per acre for beans, maybe more like 52 and a half to 53. That's one reason the market kind of stabilizes this week a little bit, but rains in the forecast for later next week will ease this heat and dryness in parts of the Western Corn Belt and move into the Delta before or by the beginning of September. So I don't really see a major, major bull market or drought fear at this time of the year, this, these late stages of the summer uh, for corn and soybeans. So what about markets that are bullish? My coffee spider has been slightly bullish really for a month. Look at the ocean temperatures, the positive TNA off the coast of Africa there, a key teleconnection. What does that mean? Dry weather continuing into October, perhaps, for sugar, coffee, and orange juice. Not a factor yet for South American planting. It could be in about 8 to 12 weeks or so. Not right now. But anyway, that situation because of the record warm ocean temperatures in El Nino neutral could mean my spider becomes more bullish later. Stay tuned, subscribe to Weather Wealth. I'll let you know if you've got to buy futures and coffee and also what the long range forecasts are for other markets. Oranges prices and sugar beginning to rally now on this drought in Brazil. So look at the situation to the right. Trees really, really stressed. The main time of the year is October through December for the coffee crop in Brazil. If they don't get rain, coffee's going to go to $3, folks. We look at the technical aspect of markets as well, as you see there on the left. 
the volatile coffee market, what is affecting it, how much is weather. We do this for pretty much all commodities and give recommendations. So El Nino neutral situations tend to be mixed for South America, but based on my program of the record warm global ocean temperatures and other factors, we can see that uh, coffee prices uh, may be similar to uh, some of the other analog years there, uh, like you see in the left, and possibly go higher. The last real El Nino neutral that had a drought in northern Brazil was in 1985. What else is going on? I was bearish sugar for two months, but now I'm concerned about the drought in Brazil. Thailand and India, a really big record crop. One reason why sugar prices broke most of the summer. But look at this dryness and this dust in Brazil. More of a factor as we get into October and November. If it doesn't rain in Sao Paulo and Paraná, sugar prices will explode. We're also watching cocoa. Tight stocks right now coming out of West Africa from the previous problems of weather. The weaker dollar and dry weather in West Africa. Look at the rainfall well below normal here in the last six to eight weeks. But my teleconnection program suggesting a wetter pattern perhaps as we go into the second rainy season. Cocoa has two wet seasons. Uh, in the spring, early summer, and again in September and October. It has two different crop cycles. We analyze that for farmers and traders all over the world, and we'll come up with some option strategies based upon my teleconnection program. Here are some of the headlines, some of my recent reports. Everything from calling the bear market in grains to uh, watching the coffee bull market right now. Uh, could we reach $9 in soybeans? It's possible uh, if we get rains in the Delta in the next 10 to 15 days. And a, a neutral to bearish report in September by the USDA as demand really, really remains weak. So once again, download a free uh, um, recent uh, issue of Weather Wealth. I make that available once every two or three months for free. Uh, and also a two-week free trial period if you really want to know how to trade all these markets on the weather and my long-range outlook. We have a big advantage doing this for 40 years and second-guessing models. Thank you.